Hello vinyl community and welcome back to the channel. My name's Edwin and this is the Pretty Green Vinyl Guy Music DC channel. Uh, so I wanted to jump in on the Vinyl Tag 2020 and uh, that's a lot of work. It's taken me two days to pull everything uh, to create this. So you've already seen many of them on the channel so let's get right into it. Um, so my best find of 2019 would be this original South African pressing of Rodriguez uh, Colfact. This was his debut album. This was, of course, he was like that lost artist that was rediscovered in the documentary Searching for Sugarman. Um, this was something that I searched out and uh, ended up getting. Uh, my favorite album of 2019, I already did my countdown, and of course I had uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, this is uh, Ghosting. Now this was my favorite album, and it still is, but one that I just discovered right at the end of the year, it was actually uh, recommended by my local record store, was um, the DC Fontaines, who are an Irish sort of post-punk uh, band out of Dublin. And um, this is very, if you like the early strokes, um, this is a really good album. Uh, the singer has a really good Dublin accent that comes through. I really enjoy this. Final Rich, this is right up your alley, man. Um, yeah, Do Do Dog Girl is the name of the album, which means like, Things that rhyme in, in humor, so like vaudeville, comedy, that type of thing. Really good album. Uh, next, a novelty record. I don't really have a lot of novelty records. I was trying to find something in my collection. The closest I could come to was this album by a band called Dread Zeppelin, which is a Zeppelin covers band, but the lead singer sounds like Elvis. So that's not a novelty. I don't know what it is. But yeah, this was kind of like a... It had its 15 minutes somewhere in the 90s. It's kind of a fun album. But yeah, Dread Zeppelin. If you haven't heard that, you can check it out. Um, the next one is a cover that plays homage to another one. Mazzy beat me to this one. But anyway, we've got uh, Abbey Road. And we've got Paul is Live. Uh, next up is uh, B-Sides and a deep cut and um, I'm going to go with Van the Man, Astral Weeks. The whole B-Side is deep cuts, um, but sort of Madam George, Ballerina, Slim Slow Slider, <laughs> all, all fantastic, fantastic songs. If you don't have this album, this is a must have for sure. So Van Morrison's Astral Weeks. Something funky. I mean, obviously Parliament, Funkadelic was the, the, the obvious choice, but I was going to go with a little Jamiroquai. Uh, someone that doesn't get a lot of talk on the vinyl community. Um, this was a 90s staple, and Jamiroquai... Um, what the heck was his real name? Oh, darn it all. Can't remember right now. He was really quite a celebrity in the UK. Famous. He had a huge series of race cars. But this is very Stevie Wonder is the best way to describe uh, uh, JK. JK. Jamiroquai. Uh, the next one was uh, Weird Shelf Buddy. So in your collection, two albums that sit side by side that have no uh, correlation between the, the different types of music. So I got uh, Clapton and The Clash was what I came up with. Clapton Unplugged and The Clash, The Clash, the classic debut album. Uh, next question is, um, I was there, I've seen that. 
I was going to go with, uh, this is uh, U2's Zuropa Tour. This is my ticket from, this is May 1992. Um, Sunday, May 31st. This was from Earl's Court in London. And this was uh, the tour for the Octom Baby uh, album. And this was this is actually considered one of the greatest tours ever. I know the U2 haters won't want to hear that, but this broke a lot of ground. Um, you know, this really when when we think about today, this is 1992. I mean, the whole idea of that tour, the Zoo TV. You know, Zoo TV was uh, sort of you know uh, looking at news programs. 24-hour news was just starting. When the band was recording the album in Berlin, that's when the Gulf War was on. And of course, that was what they were watching on television. It was just this 24-hour cycle of the Gulf War. And, and um, you know, it, it was quite an audio-visual experience. It was U2 done differently. Um, you know, they were, they were quite serious before this point. There was a bit of humor. The song The Fly, where Bono's acting out like a televangelist. Um, they had the, uh, the East German car. Um, yeah, it was, it's an, it was an amazing, amazing show and to see it in London. And I remember cause, um, Brian Eno was just like five people down for me. He was one of the producers on the album. So that was pretty amazing too. So yeah, uh, you two's Octon Baby. Um, Wish I had an original, but I only have the repress. Uh, the Zombies, Odyssey, and Oracle. Uh, I would love to have an original of that. This was a Record Store Day um, copy that came out a couple years ago. I'm going to see the Zombies later in the year, taking my dad. So they're playing at the Commodore in Vancouver, which is such a great small venue. It's going to be a great show. Um, a unique label. Uh, this is a uh, original. My name is True, Elvis Costello, and we're gonna go with the stiff label. You know, that doesn't look good, so let's do it the old-fashioned way. Um. This was a hard one. Uh, Pre-band an album featuring someone that went on to become famous. Um, this is David Bowie's Young Americans and Luther Vandross was the backup singer on this album. Uh, he had his first solo album the year after this. So yeah, Luther Vandross. Um, an underrated album. U2, no line on the horizon. I don't care what the U2 haters say. This is a great album. Really, really good. Uh, batting average, an artist or a band that just consistently puts out great music. No question. Tom Waits. I love everything he does. If another question on the list was name a band or artist that you've never seen that you'd want to see before you die. Tom Waits. Uh, same album, different cover. We got the Rolling Stones Aftermath. This is um, US in my right hand. This is UK Aftermath. An album that you bought cheap that's now worth money. Um, I bought this right when it came out because I was a massive fan at the time. This is the Oasis Time Flies box set. Of course, this was a box set that came out in the 90s that had a limited... Um, oh, sorry, it didn't come out in the 90s because it went up to 2009. But it did have um, a limited run to it, and you can't find these anywhere now. And if you can, they're worth... A ton of money. 
Um, next question is favorite drummer. Uh, I'm going to go with good old Keith Moon. This is uh, my generation. There's Keith. I think not just as a drummer, but also just his legendary, you know, shenanigans and his personality. If you've ever seen him interviewed on TV, it was just quite the character. I mean, and he was a great drummer, such a unique style. The Who, in their prime, were one of the greatest bands live. I did see them, but unfortunately, Keith Moon was long gone. Um, I did get to see them once with Entwistle, and then, of course, he passed. And then I did see them once with just the duo that they are today. So that's The Who, Keith Moon. Uh, turning 20, a, a great album that's turning 20. Um, again, Mazzy beat me to that Kid A radio head, but I'm going to add uh, Oasis uh, standing on the shoulder of Giants. And a trilogy of three solid back-to-back -back albums by the same artist that has a theme. Well, I'm going to go back to Radiohead. We have Kid A. We have Amnesiac. And we have In Rainbows. Definitely a trilogy of albums. That was um, with Kid A. Uh, Radio Radiohead changed their entire sound um, from guitar driven to more electronica and that theme continued through on all three albums they're all fantastic albums highly 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 recommend it i missed a question uh, a movie or a book about music that you highly recommend um the Live Aid concerts. I mean, if you just want to see performances by some of the greatest acts of all time, some of them are the greatest live performances of all time. You think of Queen, you think of U2, you think of Pink Floyd being reunited uh, for Live Aid 8. Um, I mean, these are just fantastic. They're fun to have. I throw them on all the time. And uh, you can see most of them on YouTube, but if you want the sound and the quality, Live Aid. And last but not least, a couple of VC shoutouts. I'm just going to go with four people that I had never heard of before that all entered my contest, which we just had the drawing yesterday. Um, I'm not going to spoiler it, but the winner hasn't noticed yet, so hopefully he'll... I'll give him another day and then I'll, I'll message him on one of his videos if I don't see anything. Um, but four shout outs, I think they're new channels. I don't think they have a lot of subscribers, but I did watch their responses and they all seem like really decent, cool people. So let's support them. Um, I have Julius Jabbar. I have Jesse Corhonen. I have the letter J Neeb and Jam on Vinyl. So if you can search those out, that would be wonderful. Uh, that is my um, Vinyl Tag 2020. Whew. And uh, I've enjoyed watching these. I wish everyone a happy and prosperous 2020 with lots of vinyl. And um, we'll see you all soon, VC. Peace. Take care.